Welcome back to Top 5 Auto Repairs. Today's topic, I'm going to tell you guys why your engine is misfiring. If you're getting a P0300, that means you're having an engine misfire and P0301 to P0310 is going to be cylinder number 1 all the way to cylinder number 10. The first and most common cause of an engine misfire is going to be worn spark plug. So here I have a set of spark plugs over here. As you can see, in the center of the spark plug, there's going to be an electrode. If the electrode becomes worn, it's going to create weak spark, therefore contributing to an engine misfire. If you look at this spark plug over here, this electrode is extremely high and there's not, there's not much gap. So that means this spark plug is good. If you're checking your spark plug and you see this top portion of the spark plug is coated in engine oil, this is going to be caused by a bad spark plug tube seal. So basically, the spark plug tube seal is part of a valve cover gasket set and when this tube seal becomes worn, it's going to allow that engine oil to see past this tube seal or spark plug tube seal go straight into the spark plug tube and fall out this top portion of the spark plug therefore causing an engine misfire you probably see this happen pretty often when you're checking spark plug so i have two different spark plugs over here you see this spark plug over here this white part over here is white color and this part here is orange color if you see this part right here is, is orange color don't worry, that's kind of normal because that's going to be caused by combustion leakage. The next common cause of ignition misfire is going to be caused by failing ignition coil. If your ignition coil is failing, it cannot provide that power to a spark plug to create an arc. So that would definitely cause an engine misfire. So basically, if you want to check your ignition coil to see if it's faulty or not, get yourself a test light. Connect this part here to ground or battery negative. Start your engine. Remove the ignition coil and check for spark. So basically you want to hold the uh, test light about half an inch away and you want to check for strong spark. Strong spark is going to be in the color of bluish color. And if you see a faint orange color, then you know that ignition coil is not providing enough power to a spark plug. Therefore, again causing an engine misfire. In addition, you want to check for cracks on the ignition coil part over here because if you have a crack over here on the ignition coil, this will cause leakage, basically a voltage leakage. Also, you want to check for loose connection or you want to check the connection, make sure they're not broken. You also want to check the wires, make sure they are not broken as well because if you have broken wires or loose connection, definitely that will contribute to an engine misfire. Moreover, when checking the ignition coil, you want to make sure there's no engine oil coated on the ignition coil because again, if engine oil is coated on the ignition coil, that's going to be caused by a bad spark plug tube seal. Furthermore, if you see water on this part of the ignition coil, that's going to be caused by condensation. And if you see coolant on this part of the ignition coil, that there's going to be a leak somewhere in your cooling system. Most likely, it's going to be caused by a bad heater core hose. The next common cause isn't quite relevant to modern vehicles, but I'm going to say it anyway. You're going to have bad spark plug wires and a bad distributor. So that's pretty much for older vehicles. And again, if you have an engine misfire due to lack of spark, again, caused by bad spark plug wires and bad distributor. The next common cause is going to be caused by bad fuel injectors. Your fuel injector can be stuck open, stuck closed, or it just malfunction and no longer working properly. If your fuel injector is stuck open, this is going to cause the spark plug to fall out and therefore cause an engine misfire. If your fuel injector is stuck closed, that means the uh, combustion chamber won't receive enough fuel, therefore causing an engine misfire. If your fuel injector is no longer functioning properly, well, you're not gonna get any response coming from the fuel injector. To quickly check for a bad fuel injector, you can use a noid light to check for injection poles. You can use a multimeter, check the uh, uh, ohms on the uh, fuel injector, and compare it with a good fuel injector. If reading is off, then you know that fuel injector is faulty. Or you want to check if the fuel injector is working or not. You can just use a long screwdriver, just touch the fuel injector, and you should feel a pulsation and vibration coming from the fuel injector. If you don't feel the fuel injector is going like click, 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 basically you can feel that on the handle of the screwdriver. That means the fuel injector is faulty. The next common cause of an engine misfire is going to be vacuum leak. Vacuum leak is extremely overlooked when it comes to diagnosing an engine misfire. A vacuum leak will cause a P0300 random engine misfire codes. Some of the common causes of a vacuum leak is going to be caused by bad intake manifold gasket. It's going to be caused by cracked or worn vacuum hoses. It's going to be caused by 
um, loose connection at the vacuum hose is going to be caused by the hose going straight to the PCV valve. It can be caused by on some vehicle design caused by bad fuel injector seal. It can be caused by bad brake booster hose, bad um, map sensor uh, hose as well and so on. So again, if you're getting P0300 random misfire codes and if you're getting P0171 and P0174 lean codes, it's pretty much a guarantee that your engine misfires is going to be caused by a vacuum leak. The next common cause is going to be caused by bad intake and exhaust valves. So basically you can have burnt valves, bent valves, broken valves, valves that are not opening and closing all the way. All of this will contribute to lower compression, therefore causing an engine misfire. If you suspect that you have bad intake or exhaust valves, go ahead and conduct a leak down test. A leak down test will show that you're going to have some sort of compression leakage coming from intake or exhaust valves. In addition, you can also buy an instrument called a boroscope. Basically, a boroscope is going to have a little camera on, a, on the end of the instrument. And basically, you can look inside the uh, combustion chamber and see if the valves are burnt or coated with carbon or it just bent or just broken off. The next common cause is you're going to have a blown head gasket. If the head gasket is blown, it's going to cause combustion leakage. So to tell you have a bad, bad head gasket or not, most likely you're going to see white smoke coming out of the tailpipe. Basically that's coolant being burnt in the combustion chamber. You're going to have low compression and you're going to have coolant and engine oil mixing together, basically causing a chocolate milk uh, or chocolate pudding like consistency when you remove the uh, engine cap. If you have an inline engine, basically four cylinder or six cylinder and you have a blown head gasket, most likely you're going to have engine misfire from cylinder number one to cylinder number four or cylinder number four and one to cylinder number six and you have a V6 engine, basically the head gasket blow on bank one, maybe you have an engine misfire on cylinder number one, three and five or on bank number two, you may have an engine misfire on cylinder number two, four, and six. The next common cause is going to be jumped timing. If your timing is jumped by more than maybe two or three teeth, definitely this will throw timing off and this will cause the valves to open and close at different times. Also, if, it, if your timing jumped a little bit too much, it can cause the uh, valves to hit against the uh, piston head, therefore causing the valve to bend for a interference engine. Overall, if you have a bad timing tensioner, bad timing idler, bad pulley, or bad timing belt, and so on, all of this is gonna cause issue in your timing system. Again, if your timing jump, it's gonna cause low compression. The next common cause is going to be stretch, or worn, or bad timing chain. So if there's something wrong in, in your timing chain system, again, just like a timing belt system, it can cause low compression. In a typical timing system, the, the chain can become stretched, the uh, timing guide can become worn, the timing chain tensioner can become worn and longer apply tension against the uh, timing chain. All of this, again, will contribute to low compression. Normally, when your timing chain is failing, you're gonna hear some sort of rattling noise, some sort of clacking noise. You're gonna hear some sort of something is moving inside your engine. Basically, again, rattling noise. The next common cause is going to be caused by a worn piston ring and worn cylinder wall. If the piston rings are worn or the compression rings are worn and cylinder walls are worn, all this will contribute to low or no compression. The next common cause is going to be caused by worn camshaft lobes. If the camshaft lobes are worn, this is going to cause the uh, intake and exhaust valve to not open and close all the way. The next common cause is going to be caused by a cracked or warped cylinder head or cracked engine block. If either of these two components become warped or cracked, this will definitely cause low compression, again, contributing to an engine misfire. The next common cause is going to be, there's a hole in the piston head. If there's a hole in the piston head caused by colliding against the uh, intake or exhaust valves, definitely this will cause low compression. The next common cause is gonna be caused by bad rod and main bearings. If these bearings are extremely worn, it's gonna cause that piston, when it's traveling upward in the combustion chamber, to go slightly at an angle. Over time, this will cause the uh, side of the cylinder wall to become worn, again, causing low compression. If you have bad rod bearings and main bearings, most likely you're going to hear knocking noise and rattling noise coming from the engine block. 
The next common cause is going to be caused by bad valve seat, springs, and retainer. So let's just say if these components fail, let's just say it breaks for some reason, it's going to affect how the valves operate, again contributing to low compression. And lastly, low fuel pressure. Low fuel pressure can be caused by a failing fuel pump, it can be caused by a bad fuel pressure regulator, it can be caused by a clogged fuel filter, and it be, can be also be caused by a fuel leak. I hope you found this video useful. As always, thank you for watching. Subscribe to Top 5 Auto Repairs.